at Keystone. It is the day after Christmas. Yes, and we hope you've enjoyed it, that you have just had such a sweet time. We want to take some time together and uh, just a moment in Scripture to celebrate all that God is doing and really to just step into this season and step into this moment. Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 16, Uh, we kick it off. Luke chapter 2, 16 through 19, they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. And after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But here it is. Here's the kicker. Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. And we really want to lock in on Mary. Mary, she had a front row seat on all of Christ's life, really, starting with the beginning to the very end. And I think there's a lot of moments that we can learn from Mary, almost like stones skipping across a lake. There are these moments that if you read too quickly, you just might miss them. Oh, absolutely. And we just celebrated Christmas. Christmas, the birth of Jesus, our Savior. That is when God came to earth on our behalf. And that's why we celebrate. That's why we have weeks of decorations and excitement. And hopefully you were part of our wonderful candlelight services. We celebrate Jesus' birth, but that was the beginning. And when you think about Mary having that eyewitness front row account, we can be so encouraged as we look at some of the moments that she experienced. Now, there are so many places in Scripture, um, so many events that happened that God did not reveal to us in Scripture. Yet, there are so many places in Scripture that He did, and we just want to look at a few of them. And I think that as we journey with Mary and what she must have felt and seen when she was with Jesus, I believe it'll encourage our experience with Jesus. And so let's look at the first one. And when I think about this one, I just kind of title it, Missing. Jesus is Missing. I don't know how you lose the Son of God, but they had a moment where Jesus was missing. And it makes me remember a time at a pumpkin patch when we had a runner. His name was Beck Thomas. Beck was a runner. (laughs) He was a runner. And I promise you, I looked down for maybe five seconds, looked up, and my little guy, probably three at the time, was gone. I mean, he had run through that pumpkin patch. And I just remember what I felt as a mom. Well, Mary had one of these moments. Now, Jesus was a little bit older, but they were traveling to go celebrate a festival, and they were on their way home, and they all of a sudden realized, where's Jesus? Jesus is missing. So I want to read this moment in time for us, and let's hear it from the book of Luke, chapter 2. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was among the other travelers. But when he didn't show up that evening, they started looking for him among the relatives and friends. Can you imagine what they were feeling? When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, Three days later, which I think it's interesting, three days. Three days later, they finally discovered him in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers, listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. We've all been there. Yes. Wow. Verse 49, Jesus responded, but why did you need to search, he asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't fully understand what he meant. When I think about Mary as a mom, and I imagine, I believe she's one of the most vulnerable characters in the story of Jesus, the person who birthed the Son of God, and just the constant mixture of just wild emotions as she looked at Jesus as, this is my son and also my Savior. That Jesus was her son, the son that she had born into the world, but Jesus was her and is our Savior, God of the universe. He is different than us, and she knew it from the beginning if you read her story of how she conceived and when it all began. And so in these real-world moments when she's just living life and distracted and busy, she missed him. 
She missed Jesus. And to think back, I think, man, if she had spent some time talking with him or if she had been in his presence, she would have known or she would have remembered the father's calling on his life. But in those moments of busyness, she became distracted. And I think there's takeaways there for us because I believe that happens in our lives, that sometimes we can become so busy, even doing good things, being about uh, the the schedule that we have or the to-do list that we have, that we miss Jesus and we assume Hey, because he's my savior, we're close. But wait a minute, maybe I haven't talked to him in a while. And so it's one of those powerful moments. And and it hits me in verse 50 where it says, but they didn't understand what he meant. We do not always understand God. We do not understand all of the ways of God. But one thing we can be certain of is this. Jesus was always on mission. And God is always on mission in our lives. Even when things don't seem to be the way we think they might should look. We can trust that God is good and that he has a plan and that he is enacting that plan on our behalf. And Jesus was right where he was destined to be. Verse 51, so then Jesus, he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to him. Remember, I'm obedient to them. Jesus never sinned. Remember that. He was perfect, all human, but all God. So he was obedient to them. And listen to this. We heard these words a moment ago. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. And I think in these two stories alone where he was first born and the celebration began as people came to see him, and then in this moment where they lost Jesus and the panic that they felt, then they found him and they didn't fully understand it all. But once again, it was just that realization that Jesus is different. Jesus is God's son. And both times we see Mary hold these things in her heart, and she thought about them often. It's powerful. It is. Um, Another episode where Mary and Jesus were thrown into the story together is in John chapter 2. And uh, I would title this one, Miracles and Ministry. And uh, John chapter 2, verse 1 through 12, said the next day there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee, and Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration, and the wine supply ran out during the festivities. So Jesus' mother told him, they have no more wine. Verse 4, dear woman, that's not our problem, (laughs) Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. That's just funny. I think that's funny to me. It's just human. Yeah, just talking it through. Just talking it through. (laughs) Verse 5, but his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. And verse 6, standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. And when the jars had been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. And when the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over and he said, a host always serves the best wine first. He said, Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine, but you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory and the disciples believed in him. After the wedding, he went to Capernaum for a few days with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples. So here again, you see Jesus and Mary together in a moment and you see Jesus enacting a powerful, his very first public miracle. It was a great shame to run out of wine. And I I love this story because here, it's almost as if Mary intuitively understands that, that God is the Lord of not just the Sabbath, but God is the Lord of celebration. And, and that it would be in the Lord's nature to not want the party to be over. for It would be in the Lord's nature for, for hosting and for hospitality. And, um, and, and, and then the symbolism behind wine is so rich in the Bible that, that there's just so much mixed in together. Then you have the Jewish ceremonial jars and you have stories in my mind going back to the Old Testament with, with the prophets and, and how they would use jars of oil for miracles and abundance and above and beyond. This is just a very, very rich story. And again, you see, I love verse five, just where it comes down to it. She told the servants, do whatever he tells you. And if you want ministry and miracles to unlock, 
that's the heart to have. Mary shows us. Absolutely. Can you imagine the miracles that she had seen before that moment? Mm. She knew, hey, guys, whatever he says, do it. And if we can have that kind of faith, it'll change our life. Another massive moment, perhaps, oh, well, it is the most horrifying moment, yet it is our greatest hope, is the moment where she sees her son suffering. And as a mom, again, we have four children, and as a mom, there's something inside you that's drawn to your child when they're in pain. You want to help. You want to rescue them. You want to ease it. You want to do whatever you can do. A few weeks ago, one of my children was really, really sick, and I was so drawn to just go and to, and to care for her and to help her and to just do anything I could to, to make her help her feel better. And as I read and imagine this moment with Mary in John chapter 19, there is no human suffering comparable to what Jesus, the Son of God, experienced on the cross. And God gives us a snapshot, a window of that moment of pain and horror. And the beauty is that you see his mom right there. Mm -hmm. That mother's heart is drawn to her boy, and she is right there. Let's pick it up in John 19, starting in verse 16. So they had already captured Jesus. They had already beaten him. They'd already sentenced him to be crucified. And in verse 16, so they took Jesus away. Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side with Jesus between them. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to his disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. This kills me as mom. Imagining looking at your child suffering in the way that Jesus was suffering unjustly. He is perfect. She knew who he was, and she knew he had the power to get off of that cross. And yet there he is, and it seems like all hope is lost, and yet she will not run. She will not hide. She stands there and stays with her boy. And as she is there, I think what amazes me is that the heart of Jesus sees his mom while he himself is suffering. While he himself is shedding his blood, taking on all the sins of you and of me and all of the earth, he is taking that upon himself and he looks at his mom and he makes sure she's taken care of. He looks at his friend John and he says, she is now your mother, take care of her. And from that day forward, his friend did. That's one of those moments where I believe we don't understand the suffering in the moment. And there's times when there is misery, but we've got to understand that that misery, the misery of Jesus unlocked the hope of the world. And it's a powerful moment when we see Mary having that kind of encounter with her son. You know, the very last of that passage, and he said to his disciple, that's John. He said to this disciple, that's, that's the apostle John, here is your mother. And from then on, the disciple took her into his home. That means that he took her into his home. He assumed responsibility for her. He, they didn't have social security at that time. The, he was basically the new caregiver for Mary. And But the implication of that is pretty powerful. Uh, we really don't see Mary from here on out mm -hmm. in Scripture. Um, but there's this feeling when you read the New Testament, you definitely see John from here on out in Scripture. And John becomes this, this titan in, in the local church. And so you can see Mary, the mother of Christ, in John's home as he is one of those few disciples that, like Peter, I mean, just assuming such a massive responsibility for the church. And, and it, it leads you to conclude that she remained on mission after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which would make total sense. And this is a, a category I would title mission, you know, Mary on mission, because when she accepted that she had conceived a child uh, from God Himself, that it was to be, it was it was to be a virgin birth. When she understood that, she embraced it. We see in in the scriptures following what we call the the Magnificat, Mary's Magnificat, where she sang to the Lord and she she worshipped Him. That song, the Magnificat, is an acceptance of 
what is happening to her, but I want to give you a broader picture. That's her as a, I mean, can you imagine the fear that she must have felt pregnant, but not by a man? Um, everybody would misunderstand her. She was engaged. Would she be cast out? Yet she accepted it wholeheartedly. Bigger picture, she's accepting the mission of God for her life and the mission of God for humanity. That says a lot about Mary. And we've we've hit a lot of these topics. We've read the scriptures and I want to, now I think it'd be cool to just kind of quickly, we'll hit this quickly, um, to quickly just really take each one of those and just land the plane for you in this holiday season. Um, and let's kick it off with the missing Jesus. Absolutely. I think in our lives, we've got to be careful not to miss Jesus, to get so busy with our own journeys and our own lives that we miss spending time with the only one who can guide our steps to the best life. We work so hard to create our own life. And the reality is the creator is the only one who knows how to do that. And so as we go into this 2022, we go into it with power, knowing that we are with Jesus and Jesus is with us. So don't forget Jesus in the new year. Don't forget him in your parenting. Don't forget him in your marriage. Don't forget him when you have desires in your heart and dreams that you have and things that you long for. Don't forget him. Don't follow what you feel. Follow Jesus. And you can only follow Jesus if you don't assume that he's with you, but you know he's with you because you're spending time with him. You're listening to his voice and you're reading the word of God to show you which way to go. We don't want to forget Jesus because Jesus does not forget us but he will allow us to make our choices. And we want to make those choices with our hand in his. Mm -hmm. Talk to us also about landing the plane on the miracles and the ministry. Yes. Uh, that moment at the the wine, uh, the, the marriage in Cana where he turned the water into wine. There's oh. a lot there, but we want to hit it quickly, yes. but we want to land that for them. Absolutely. When you think about that first miracle and imagining again, what did Mary say? It, the Bible says she held it in her heart. As she saw these different things. She just would hold these things in her heart. We need to be people who see the miracles of God. Like don't miss them. Don't miss them. Sometimes things will happen in our lives and we'll completely dismiss them as just happenstance. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Every good and perfect gift comes down from God the Father who made the heavenly lights. Don't be deceived. He is the one who gives the good gifts. So look for the miracles. Have faith to see, faith eyes to see the miracles of God. Another takeaway from that story that I just love, and you read it, you said it, spoke it twice. And that is that she, Mary, in that moment, looked at everyone and said, whatever Jesus says, do it. Whatever Jesus says, you need to do it. She spoke with authority because she knew. And I would just tell us this year, this walking into this new year with so many wonderful things happening in this great church, Keystone Church, God's church, so many things that God has planned for your life. Whatever God says, do it. And if you don't know what it says, get in the word of God. Be in his house, come to his church, hear his, his messages through the people that he's chosen to deliver them and read the word of God for yourself. You will not be disappointed when you follow God. And you know, when we talked about Mary standing at the foot of the cross, yeah. the misery, there's so much to unpack there. I think of Hebrews chapter 12, verse two, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding the shame. Remember this in this season, if you're having a hard time, if, if as you read Hebrews 12, two, if this is a season for you that is, that is painful or your joy is being robbed, or you feel an incredible amount of stress, uh, whatever you may be going through, remember this, that when you're in the hard place, remember our hope. If Mary could stand and see her son crucified for her sins, and then go to live with John as, as basically his mother and, and be a part of that resulting church, um, then we are to as well see what 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 the stress is give it to christ on the cross stand at the foot of that cross give it to him he he died for it and let him take that anxiety let him take that the shame let him take the mistakes and the regrets and remember who your hope is your hope is on jesus christ who died for your sins conquered death came back to life and then finally the mission the mission when you've encountered jesus you can't help but join him on this great, exciting mission. Mary was an eyewitness of who Jesus is 
We want to be witnesses of who Jesus is in our own lives. And this holiday season, we truly do pray that, pray that as you've heard from the life of Mary and you've contemplated these things as we've walked together through several different places in Scripture, we really do pray that you leave encouraged. And somewhere along the way, this really did speak to you. Absolutely. We were walking into such an incredible moment as a church family. Let's walk it together as we read accounts from real people like Mary who encountered Jesus in her life. That same Jesus is alive and well and seated at the right hand of the Father right here and right now. And His Holy Spirit is available to us every day if we have faith in Christ. And if you're listening today and you have never met or known Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, Make that decision today to receive him by faith, believing that he is the son of God, believing that Jesus did die on the cross for your sin, believing that he died on that cross, but he is no longer dead. He is alive. He rose out of that grave and his power is available to help you live. If you believe that, pray, pray that prayer to Jesus, invite him into your life and let someone know, let us know. We wanna walk with you. We'd love to celebrate you in baptism, and we'd love to be on mission together. Mary had an eyewitness front row seat to the life of Jesus, and her life encourages ours. Let her story sink in deep, and let her story, along with countless others, maybe even people that you know, maybe somebody in your family who loves Jesus, those stories, let them encourage your faith, like it says in Hebrews 12 too. So therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses, Mary included, to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. How do we do this? We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Will you pray with us? Oh God, I just pray that you will help us to fix our eyes on Jesus. That Lord, we believe you are the champion God. You are the one who overcame the grave. You are the one who took our sin and gives us victory, Lord, as we put our trust and faith in you. Help us to walk into 2022 with power that comes from you, God, and help us to remember who you are in the name of Jesus, amen.